Hello all, my name is Krishnag and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will be basically discussing about cosine similarity and cosine distance. Now, in my previous video, I have already explained you about Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance. I just forgot to mention one point. Euclidean distance is basically called as L2 norms. Okay, L2 norms. And Manhattan distance is basically called as L1 norm. There is a reason why this is basically represented because we have one terminology called as Minkowski. Minkowski is basically L of P norm. We basically represent it as L of P norm and P value can be one. If P value is one, then that basically becomes, uh, if I have one, that basically becomes a Manhattan distance. Because this, if I represent P with one, this becomes L1, right? And similarly, if I make P is equal to two, this becomes L2. So if when the P is one, it is basically represented as Manhattan distance. When P is equal to two, it is basically represented as Euclidean distance. Okay. So if you have not seen that particular video, please have a look. I've explained clearly. I've also explained the practical applications also. It is already present in my playlist. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to continue the discussion with respect to cosine similarity and cosine distance. Now, <clears throat> this particular topic is widely used in recommendation system. I'll tell you why. I'll give a very good example why cosine similarity and cosine distance is basically used. First of all, I'm just going to take this term which is called as similarity and the other term which is called as distance. Now cosine similarity and cosine distance basically says that in terms of similarity and distance, suppose I have two points P1 and P2. As the distance within this point increases, the similarity between those points decreases. Okay. And similarly, if the distance between these points in decreases, then the similarity in between these points basically increases. So in short, I can represent cosine similarity and cosine distance by using a small equation. Let me just write it down. So I can basically write one minus cosine similarity is equal to cosine distance. I'll explain you what I meant by this, how to find out cosine similarity, everything I'll mention, I'll explain you everything. But just remember this particular formula, which in another one or two minutes, I'll be explaining about this, what exactly is. Now let us go and understand what is this exact cosine similarity. Okay. So let me just take a very good example again. And it is always good that we, and this particular example, whatever I take is based on geometrical figures, right? We, I, I try to show it in the geometrical way. So suppose I have a feature F1 and F2, F1 and F2. And suppose I say that there is two points like P1, and another point as P2. Now, and you, as you know that if I want to find out the Euclidean distance, I'll basically compute this, right? I'll compute this particular D value. Okay. And let me just draw the other two lines. Okay. So if I want to compute this D, you already know what is the Euclidean distance formula. And we can basically compute this particular by using a some normal Pythagoras theorem. Now, cosine similarity basically says that in order to find out the similarity between these two points, I have to basically find out the angle between them. Now suppose this particular angle is 45. Okay. So what I'll write cosine similarity is represented by cos theta. Okay. This is what cosine similarity is all about. And this theta is basically the angle between P1 and P2. Simple. This is what I'm basically representing. And always remember, cosine similarity will be ranging between minus one to plus one. How? I'll just explain you. Okay. Now let's just, let, let us take an example. Now in this case, I know my, this angle is basically 45 degree. So let me just replace it over here. So cos 45 will be somewhere around 0.53 approximately. Okay. So it is basically saying that it is 53% similar P1 and P2 based on the distance, based on the angle that is created between them. Okay. Now let me take another example. I'm just rubbing this. Okay. And let me just compute some other example. Suppose my P1 is here and my P2 is here. Now you can see that the distance between them is very, very big. And suppose if I want to calculate the angle, okay, I want to calculate the angle. This angle is basically 90 degree right? This angle is basically 90 degrees. So suppose if I replace in the same formula, so cos 90 is basically zero, right? And that basically indicates that this point and this point is not similar, 
right? Because this point has a huge gap. See, this particular D also, if we try to calculate, this D will be also very high, right? Now, if I go and see the angle, it is basically 90. So when I'm basically assigning in this formula, cos 90 is also zero. Now let us consider one more thing. Let us consider one more thing. Instead of writing P2 over here, suppose my P2 is here itself in the same plane. Suppose my P2 is here in the same plane. Now you see the angle between these two points, these two lines, right? This is the same plane. This is the same uh, vector in short, you can say P1 and P2 are in the same plane and same vector. Now the angle between them is zero. Now when the angle between them is zero, if I try to replace in the same equation, cos zero will be one. And again, how I'm saying cos zero will be one. If you know differential equations, if you if you have learned about sine, cos theta, tan theta and all those things, you'll be able to understand what I'm actually saying. The angle between them is basically zero degree and I'm trying to replace this over here. So it becomes one. Now that basically indicates that these two point are almost similar because the vector is in, is in the same direction. Okay, and when the vector is in the same direction, that basically indicates these two are similar points. Right? Now, I'll, I'll explain you some more things. Let me just extend this line. As you know that, in our geometry, we have four axes. This is our 90 degree, this is our 180 degree, and this is our 270 degree. Right? This is our 270 degree. Now, understand that when the angle is zero, at that time, my output is one. When the angle is 90, the output is zero. When the angle is 180, so cos 180 is basically minus one. And again, when I go and find out the value of cos 270, the value is zero. And finally, when I go and calculate the cos value of 360 degree, then the value is one. Now this basically indicates that as the point is going farther from this, from this axis, right? It became zero, then it became minus one. Now it has again become zero since it is coming towards that particular axis. And finally, when it makes a complete circle with 360 degree, it is in the same axis. The so value will be actually one. How I'm saying you assign this cos 90 is basically zero, right? Cos 180 is minus one. Cos 270 is also zero. You can verify it through the maths also. And cos 360 is basically one. Now I know all these things, right? Now I have discussed about cosine similarity. Now remember the equation that I told you for cosine distance, right? So once you calculate, suppose uh, once you have calculated the cosine similarity between the two points, if I want to compute the cosine distance, all I have to write is that cosine distance is equal to one minus cosine similarity, right? So in this case, suppose my cos 45 was there. That basically means the distance between the two points was 0.53, 45 degree. At that time, cos 45 is 0.53. So if I want to find out the cosine distance, it will be mon minus 0.53. So it is somewhere around 0.47. What about in this case? If the distance between the two points, or the, sorry, the angle between the two points is 90 degree, what will happen in that case? So this cos distance will be one minus cosine similarity is basically zero. So this will basically be one. That basically indicates the distance is more, right? Now, similarly for this particular case, right? Where my cosine zero is one. So the cosine distance will be nothing but one minus one, which is zero. This basically indicates that the distance between the two point is very, very less. And this is pretty much similar to this cosine similarity and cosine distance. Now let me show you an example how this particular technique is basically used in recommendation systems. So I'm just going to rub this. I hope you understood what I'm trying to explain in this. Now let me consider that I have two features of movies. Suppose a movie recommendation system, suppose. Uh, this is my action parameter. This is my comedy parameter, suppose, right? Suppose my, I'm taking an example of a movie called as Avengers. You know that Avengers is an action movie. So action parameter value will be one. And suppose it is not that much comedy. I'm just going to take it as zero, right? Now suppose let me take the example of Minions. So if this is Minions movie, okay? And Minions, you know that everybody, that it is comedy, but action, it is like zero. There are some little bit of action, but just understand that I'm making it as zero and my comedy is one. This is vectors, right? This is two dimension vectors. Now, if I want to find out the angle between these two points, I know that it is 90. So what I'll do is that I'll go and try to find out the cosine similarity. Cosine similarity is nothing but cos theta. Cos theta is nothing but theta over here is 90. So when I write cos 90, 
this particular value becomes zero. Now this particular thing indicates that a person who has seen Avengers will not get the recommendation of minions. I'm just taking for an example guys like this you'll just not have two parameters or two dimensions because this is basically a two dimension diagram. Okay, here I've just taken action and comedy. There will be other parameters also other genres of movies also. Okay, now similarly let me just consider one more movie. So instead of minions, I will go and take another Iron Man. Now Iron Man is also an action movie. So this uh, vector will also be one zero. So the distance between them will be zero degree. I mean, sorry, the angle between them will be zero degree. So when the angle between them is zero degree, you just replace in theta value of cos zero. This will be one. Now, if you want to find out the distance, replace that distance is equal to one minus cosine similarity. That is the formula that I discussed. So one minus one is actually zero. The distance between Iron Man and Avengers is basically zero because it is in the same plane. It is, it is, it is behaving. It is basically in the same uh, unit vector, right? So that is why this cosine similarity is very, very heavily used in recommendation system. Okay. And when I say not only movie recommendation system, it may be your Amazon product recommendation in your Amazon apps and other apps in many websites. This is basically getting used a lot. Whenever you want to create a recommendation system, there are some other techniques. Uh, there are also some other techniques like correlation, um, Pearson correlation and many more. Okay, but this is one of the technique wherein you are basically using cosine similarity and cosine distance to find out what recommended movies you should get. Okay, and this is what is all about cosine similarity and cosine distance. I hope you like this particular video guys. Please do make sure subscribe the channel, share with all your friends. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all.